Most people think the Queen's Guard is just about standing around looking cool. But there's a lot more to them. Unfortunately, the guards are sick of people asking them questions, so I'm going to give you the insider secrets. From the fainting protocol to their refusal to be touched, let's talk about 15 secrets the Queen's guards don't like to speak about. <sighs> Number 15. They have to faint. According to protocol, it's pretty much a requirement that the Queen's guards have to faint, if they need to anyway. And yeah, they often need to. Have you seen what they have to wear? It's like wearing winter clothes in a sauna. There aren't many people on the planet who could withstand such an intense experience as this. With their heavy woolen clothes and heavy black fur hat, the royal guards are coached up on what to do if they feel the need to pass out. As soon as they feel even slightly slightly dizzy, he must stand at attention and hold that position even when they fall. Yeah, that's right. If they get too hot, the royal guards will faceplant the floor and be expected to get back up and carry on. Now that is the classic British spirit, isn't it? There are all manner of protocol that the royal guard have to follow, but the fact that so many people eagerly sign up to faceplant the ground is something else. That's pure loyalty to your queen, I guess. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. It's time for the rare topic. Some people will do anything to try and get a reaction from the royal guard. This drunk woman took it to a whole new extreme, putting a toy gun on one of the guards. Yeah, she thought a toy would scare the royal guards into speaking. Well, she probably didn't expect what came next. The woman was detained and later arrested by the royal guards, who I'm sure very much enjoyed the karma. This is why you never mess with a royal guard. What do you think? Was it just a simple mistake or is this woman a straight up fool? Comment down below with the hashtag RareTop Topic, and let us know your opinion about what we just saw. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. You can't touch them. Yep, pretty much like MC Hammer, it's pretty well known that you just can't touch the Royal Guard. And like MC Hammer, they don't tend to take it all that well when you break the rules and do it anyway. Unlike MC Hammer though, these people have weapons, so can't touch this. Anybody with even the slightest knowledge of London knows that touching a Royal Guard is a surefire way to be terrorized by a man in a fur hat. The first reaction you'll get if a guard believes you're about to touch them is a simple Simple warning. Okay, simple might be generous. They will pretty much just scream in your face until you back off. My wife and a queen's glove! But if you don't back off, they're legally permitted to present their bayonets right in your face. And if you don't back off even then, I don't know what happens, but I'm gonna guess it's probably not good. Thankfully, there's not really any credible reason that you would ever need to touch a royal guard. But if you still feel the need to do so, well, you probably deserve whatever reaction they give you because, oof, they did warn you. Number 13. No picking, no scratching. A common misconception is that the Royal Guard are somehow not allowed to move. That's actually not true whatsoever. Because standing still for too long isn't all that healthy, they're expected to move every 10 minutes. But when it comes to minor discomfort, absolutely no mercy. The regular marching is pretty much the only movement they're allowed to do. Not counting the angry shouting and bayonet pointing we mentioned just a second ago. But say they got a little sweaty and need to wipe the moisture out of their eyes. Nah, got a particularly irritating itch you just have to scratch. Not happening, buddy. Suffering from an extreme case of hay fever during a brutal summer? Sorry, bud. You're just gonna have to learn to suppress that excruciating sneeze you feel coming. The job is more important than any minor discomfort. To us normal people, this sounds like a living hell, but the Royal Guard probably see it as an honor. They get to protect the Queen and, in that case, suppressing a sneeze is probably worth the excruciating discomfort they feel. Or maybe they get paid well. I really don't know. Number 12. They stop for no one. 
If you do happen to visit the Queen's royal residence while in the UK, this is a pretty important tip. Do not, under any circumstances, stand in the way of the royal guard. It's not gonna be pretty. The Royal Guard takes their job extremely seriously, and that means nobody, and I mean nobody, gets in their way. Take a look at these videos, and you'll see exactly what I mean. It's not unheard of for the Royal Guard to forcibly push people out of the way if they happen to be blocking the marching path of the Guard. As we've already said, nothing is more important to these guys than getting on with their job. And their job is pretty much all based on old traditions and protocol. Unfortunately, none of these traditions involve you. There's no I in tradition. Okay, there is, but spiritually it's not there. If you value your life, or at least your camera, you'll know to dive out of the way if you see a stomping army of royal guards headed in your direction. It's just not really worth the risk. Number 11. They have to move. As we've already mentioned, part of the protocol for royal guards requires them to move. Sure, they're not allowed to make themselves comfortable in any way, but the queen isn't a total jerk. Even she knows you have to make sure they're somewhat comfortable. This unique protocol specifies that the only movements the guard is allowed to make during their regular shift are to turn left, march about 10 paces, turn around, and return to their standing still. The reason for this highly prescriptive and specific order, because if the guard stands still for too long, the blood gets trapped in their legs and it becomes more likely that they will faint. And as we've already covered, if the guard faints, they have to basically face plant the concrete. doesn't sound like so much fun when I put it like that, right? So the queen takes mercy on her guards and allows them to get a little bit of specified exercise. They may not be able to enjoy a game of soccer or tennis, but they can march and shout at tourists. Seems like a fair compromise, all things considered. Number 10. They change with the season. When you think of the Royal Guard, you have a certain image in your head, right? An incredibly pasty guy wearing a big fur hat and a red tunic. Well, three quarters of that is correct, but the tunic thing? Apparently not so much. Actually, the tunics change according to the season. While the red tunic may be the most famous, it's only worn during the spring and summer seasons. At any other time, the guard changes to a much longer gray coat. And if the weather is especially wet or cold, which, let's be honest, pretty much sums up the UK's weather, they will put the old gray coat out for a day. Well, you can't really hold it against them, would you want to stand out in the rain for hours and hours and hours on end? I know I wouldn't. So if you ever happen to be in the UK and can't Find the red guys. You're not losing your mind, they just probably put on a coat is all. Actually, it's probably the only thing about their day that ordinary people like you and I can relate to. I wouldn't bring it up, though. Number 9. No laughing, no smiling. Could you go through your day without laughing or even smiling? For most of us, that's an immediate no. Joy and jokes are about the only things that keep us going through our mediocre and mundane jobs. Well, if you're a guardsman, better forget about the punchlines. Many tourists to Buckingham Palace just love trying to provoke the royal guard to laugh, but it never really happens. They're just too somber, too professional to even consider breaking into a laugh. And that's that's understandable since they have such a serious and important job. These soldiers are an active service to the Queen, and they have to carry themselves in a certain way. Indulging in knock-knock jokes with the public probably isn't a great way to keep that kind of professional appearance, although it would be one hell of a hoot. So if you are planning a visit, it's probably a good idea to leave the joke book at home, or at least it will end the same way with no laughter from a serious guardsman, because they're just not not gonna break, man. You'll get more of a reaction from the brick wall behind him. Number 8. They must repolish shoes. Like everybody, the Queen's guards don't like excessively hot weather, but while most of us hate it because it makes us sweaty or makes us look like we've been roasted in an oven set too high, they have a bit of a better reason. Their shoes actually melt. 
Yeah, you heard me, their shoes melt. Or at least, part of their shoes melt. Those drill boots are coated in a special polish to ensure that they shine nicely in the sun. But that comes with an unfortunate problem, because the sun tends to melt that polish right off. So after a long shift of standing and not wiping off the sweat, the guards have to immediately repolish their shoes. And you can bet they're aware that it's just gonna melt off again anyway. Maybe all that admin work isn't too bad now, huh? Eh, nah, still sucks. This just shows that the Queen's Guard doesn't simply go off duty after their hard work, they have to go wipe the sweat off and do their homework. Which in this case is just more manual work. The more we talk about this, the more convinced I am that this job is a living hell. Number 7. The Hat is Real Fur Yes, as in, real fur, coupled with the wool clothes and the inability to wipe the sweat away, it honestly sounds like the Disneyland mascots have it better. And just wait until you hear about how much it weighs. Ugh. The Royal Guard's hats are bare skin caps, and their size is something to truly behold. They measure 18 inches tall and can weigh up to 1.5 pounds. Now consider how long the Royal Guards stand watch outside the palace, and you can imagine just how strong their necks have to be to hold these things up. And that's in the summer months. If you factor in the weather of a typical British day, that's rain, you can bet that those hats will get a hell of a lot heavier. Not a fun time for these guys. Doesn't it seem more and more understandable why these guys tend to faint so often? I'm frankly just surprised that nobody has snapped their neck because it got wet. That seems like an occupational hazard, probably something the Royal Health and Safety team should start looking into. I'm just saying, worth a look. Number 6. The straps are positioned carefully. So, given how heavy the hat is, you can bet that there's been some careful thought given to how exactly it stays on. And it's a solution that dates all the way back to the 18th century when the hats were first conceived. In that period, these hats were the go-to design for soldiers because it was believed that the bearskin caps made them appear taller. And apparently, taller was more intimidating. At least it was to Napoleon, who was, well, you know. But the designers quickly realized that the caps needed to be secured beneath the lip of the guards as opposed to under the chin. You see, if the hat was tied beneath the chin and that guard got shot, the hat would drop backward and could snap the guard's neck in the process. You know, because the hat is stupidly heavy. When you think about it, it does make sense. It would be hugely embarrassing to have to explain to the monarch that the army survived the gunshots but died because of their hats. That's gonna be Quite a long and strange conversation. <laughs> Number 5. They have to pass the barb test. Despite what some people will tell you, the barb test has nothing to do with Nicki Minaj. It's the British Army recruit battery test, but it's not as violent as that sounds. Uh, I think. I hope. If you want to become a member of the Queen's Guard, the barb is an absolute necessity. After all, the Royal Guard is basically a military organization. So you have to pass all the unusual tests. According to someone who actually went through it, the barb test basically tests your logic and intelligence. And there's a height requirement. At one time, anyone under 6 foot 2 inches would be turned away at the door. Today, that number has been brought down to a more common and accessible level. 5 feet 10 inches. Why is height important? Uh, I don't know, maybe the queen is often threatened by men 5 foot 11 inches? Of course, height has absolutely nothing to do with the test itself. The barb is just a 30 minute long computer based test, checking your problem solving, analytical and logical skills. It's pretty much an aptitude test with a funny name, which actually is my kind of test. Number 4. They protect more than the palace. 
Even though they're mostly associated with Buckingham Palace, the Royal Guard has a much wider duty to honor. In fact, they pretty much can be found at every royal event and military barracks in the City of London, and slightly beyond. They're all over the place. The Foot Guard Regiment, that's the fancy name for the Queen's Guard or the Royal Guard, are obligated to protect other royal landmarks. They're officially known as the primary garrison for the City of London, which basically means they are the go-to military presence in the city. They're usually posted everywhere from Buckingham Palace to Windsor Castle and Woolwich. And for those places where there is no royal guard, you will see these sentries turn up in the event of a royal visit. If one of the royal family is scheduled to make an appearance, you'll see those fur hats. While they certainly shouldn't be described as the Guards of London, they're definitely found all over the place. Especially if there is some kind of ceremonial duty. It's like they have a hotline. If there's a royal person or event that needs protecting, just call your local royal guard and they will be there. Number 3. The Queen's Secret Nickname did you know that the Queen has a secret nickname that she uses in public? Obviously, being an international recognized figure, she has to be somewhat under the radar. But her actual fake name? I don't think any of us really saw it coming. A former royal bodyguard claimed that the queen uses a secret code name when she travels outside the palace. Instead of calling the queen by her real name when she is doing engagements, staff instead are to call her S. When asked what the S stands for, an aide replied, it's Sharon. Queen Sharon. It just sounds wrong, right? Of course, the queen and her husband, Prince Philip, had nicknames for each other when they were in private. Anybody that's seen The Crown will know that Prince Philip often referred to his wife as Lilibet, a play on her name Elizabeth. But I would argue that Lilibet is quite a different name to Sharon, and of course, the queen is not, as far as any of us know, married to her bodyguards. Then again, they say life starts at 95. There's always time. Number 2. The Reason for the Red Tunic What's the real reason that the guards are actually wearing red? Well, as with just about everything relating to Britain, it's all about history and tradition. And also, just a little bit of good old-fashioned war strategy. But mostly, they're just cheap. No offense, England. A long and persistent rumor has claimed that the red tunic was selected because it concealed bloodstains, allowing the guards to retain their intimidating stance, even when injured. That's not actually true, though. The truth is that the British were just very cheap. The soldiers wore red because it was the cheapest and easiest dye to find. That's pretty much the whole reason. The fact that it helped the British to clearly identify their allies in the heat of smoke, battle, and general mess of war. Well, well, that was just more coincidence and luck than anything else. Not that the British would ever tell you that, of course. When your job was all about protecting the Queen from harm, you have to maintain a certain decorum and strength, you know? You can't let people know you're cheap. Until it's your turn to buy the drinks, then all bets are off. Number 1. No Toilet Break For Them if there's one thing you already know about the Queen's Guard, it's that no amount of screaming or pleading will make them break their position. Not even puppies could pull them away from their job. And believe me, people have tried, and that's because of yet more protocol. Take me one more time. Where are the the guards are physically not allowed to move under any circumstances until the changing of the guard. Even toilet breaks are not allowed for the Queen's guards during their working shift. Yeah, they would rather the guard poop themselves in public than use a restroom and potentially expose Her Majesty to harm. Is that insanity or reasonable? I don't feel I'm in any position to make an assessment. Regardless, these soldiers are trained not to respond to tourists. They're supposed to remain perfectly still even when some of these rowdy, often American, tourists decide to throw objects at them. Life as a royal guard sounds pretty rough, doesn't it? Spending all day having to pee yourself, get stuff thrown at you, and then getting to enjoy another eight-hour shift of doing absolutely nothing but standing and trying not to pass out in the heat. Sounds like an absolute dream! Did you learn any secrets you didn't know before? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!